I really think that we need new copyright laws when it comes to music and that we need to respect songwriters' songwriting composition more than we have done the last few decades. In the old days it was much easier. We had a composer, maybe two, that wrote the music down on sheet music, maybe collaborating with the lyricist and arranging the songs themselves. Or if they didn't, they sent the song to an arranger. Should that arranger have composition credits? Yeah, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Let's take this as an example. That ba da da ba da wasn't a part of the original composition, but it's so significant to the song that we can't ignore it. Therefore, I think that the arranger should have composition credits. Nowadays, it's much more difficult because we live in a recording era. We have vibe, sound, production, mixing to consider as well. Should the people that do that have composition credits? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. It's how much they contribute to our listening experience of the song. Nowadays it's also very artist focused. I know artists that have other songwriters. They come in, change melody on one note and change two words and suddenly they are co-writers of the song with equal composition credits as the people that have written the song. Is that fair? Well, I don't know. But this leads me into the lawsuit against Ed Sheeran, claiming that he have copied Ed Townsend and Marvin Gaye's song Let's Get It On with his song Thinking Out Loud. There are similarities, and let me show you some of the similarities at the piano. I will do a mashup of the songs, so see if you can hear where the song changes. It's much harder, isn't it, when you hear it on a piano and you don't hear the voices, you don't hear the sound, you don't hear the drums and bass. Talking about drums and bass, these songs have exactly the same drum beat, exactly the same bass line. We have D, F sharp, G, A. The chord structure is the same. We have D and then a D with a third in the bass, F sharp. Or in Marvin Gaye's case, it's actually an F sharp minor, but the difference between those chords are, is so small, it doesn't matter. And then G and some kind of A. A difference though is that the Marvin Gaye song has the same chord structure throughout the song, whilst the Ed Sheeran song have a pre-chorus that have different chords. This pre-chorus. so on. But let's look at the sheet music and see if we can find similarities and differences in the melody. If we look at them side by side we can see that there are similarities. Both of them start at F sharp, the third in the scale. Both start just after the second beat. Both go up and then, then down to the first note of the scale. For me it feels like the Ed Sheeran song is more of a written melody whilst the Marvin Gaye song is more of an improvisation around certain notes and structure. By the way, the Marvin Gaye song is actually in E-flat, so I lowered it one half step. Or you might say D-sharp, but then I guess you have some kind of problem. Are the similarities enough for a lawsuit? I don't know. I don't know what leg to stand on in this case. I have sort of a conclusion solution myself, which I will tell you in a little bit. I saw Adam Neely's video about this. I will link it down below. It's, it's good to see. And he said something that I think is very true. If we take an AI computer and feed it with Marvin Gaye's song, Let's Get It On, and told that AI to write a song similar to this one about love and marriage, we would probably have something similar to thinking out loud. So the vibe, the tempo, the feel is very, very close. 
but I don't think it's the same song. I think Thinking Out Loud is inspired by Let's Get It On. Unintentionally inspired, I presume. I know about a Swedish songwriter that writes a lot of K-pop for Korea, Japan and so on, who changed the royalties within his publishing company. So every song that he writes gets divided into 100 points. And every person that contributes to that song gets some points. Maybe the composer gets 40 points, the drummer gets 6 points, the guitarist gets 5 points, and the lyricist gets 20 points, and so on. So every person that actually contributes to the song gets points for the achievement he or she have done to the song. I think this could be a solution for royalties in the future, now when we have AI to consider as well. What I mean is, let's listen to an example and I will show you what I mean. It probably took about two seconds for you to realize that this is Rosanna by Toto, but you only heard the drums. But they are so significant to the song that I think that Jeff Porcaro, the drummer in Toto at that time, who drummed on this track, should have some composing credits. Maybe not as much as David Page, who actually composed the song from the, from the beginning, but he contributed to the song. But unfortunately, he hasn't. And therefore, in this lawsuit, I don't think that these two songs are the same. But I do think that the vibe, the feel and the inspiration is so significant that I think that Let's Get It On should have some kind of credit. Maybe five points, maybe ten points, but not more because it isn't the same song. That's my two cents in this matter. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you have other solutions? Please tell me in the comments. Solutions in Swedish is lösningar. Lösningar. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, Roger that.